Today's guest has made a name for himself creating award-winning landscapes, Davey Franklin. It is extraordinarily hard doing this show. Terrace, to go to a front yard. You see his face? This is scared. <laughs> How do you do an in-ground pool in a week? Just get Dave Franklin to do it. Okay, mate, the wall's 400 mil high. Yeah. So you can't be going a meter <laughs> down. I'm like, mate, this is not even retaining. I'm like, so this went to Australia. And if you have a, actually have a look on my Google reviews, it says the guy doesn't know how to do foundations. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Not, for yeah. instance, we had a guy that was, and this is ridiculous, and I don't want to say his name, but, but you, <laughs> you know who you are. You know, Tony, Tony. No. <laughs> <laughs> no one's ever lucky. I, mean, I think the only lucky game in life is where you're born and then you make the rest. Stick around, it's going to be a good ride. No, oh, boys, pumped today. Mate, I think I've been um, robbed a bit, to be honest, just the last few days. What, robbed what? Been, Yeah, robbed. What do you mean? <laughs> well, two things. Yeah. I have to wear a night guard to bed because I'm a mad grinder. So, night guard, do you want to explain that for the yes. my brother? Is it like a full head kick? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> my brother used to have one when we were kids. No, it's like it's like a mouth guard, but it's called a night guard, it's a smaller one. Yeah. Oh, yeah, they're so, clear, yeah. So, I yeah. like I like full chomp at night, like yeah. I go through them pretty quickly. But I woke up the other morning and I lost them, I don't know where they went, yeah, they just disappeared, yeah. Are you top and bottom? Just top, oh, okay, yeah. So anyhow, then I had all to go... You, all you need is one. You That's need, what I was thinking. You, you need, need to one. separate. But didn't he say they just disappeared? Sorry, it disappeared. It disappeared? Well, sorry. It's confusion, sorry, man. Yes, oh, yes. Sorry, happy to clarify. I was clarify. visualising, man. Yeah, I, was, yeah. I was all in, man. Let's <laughs> thought it was pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> but anyhow. I used, I used to have one of those. I got over wearing it. It kept me up. It was pain. But don't you, it ruins your teeth if you don't wear it yeah, and you grind I, I, I it. I reckon night. it's a bit of an upsell from the old dentist. <laughs> well, that's what I was about to go into. <laughs> ah. So to get the night guard, you've got to go into the dentist. Yep. So I booked the dentist. Haven't been since 2018, five years. Well done. Jeez. So I was going in there. Just Yep, just a new night guard, thanks. Next minute. <laughs> They're doing the whole, sh- whole shebang on me. What's they're that? doing a full clean. A full reno. They're doing oh, a full yeah. reno, looking at every tooth. <laughs> and then they're trying to tell me you need a filling. I'm like, excuse me? Hold on. Well, I'm just about? here for the guard. I just want a night guard. Yeah. There's nothing wrong with my teeth. They feel great. Is that is, is that a bit of an upsell, did you think? No, nah, it feels like They're like it. mechanics, man. Feels yeah, I like, feel like so, the old mechanics. You well, remember like, there you go? You know, well, they're probably a business. They're just a business like any Your car runs good until you take it to the so mechanic. So I'm thinking, you know, what's a night guard cost me? It's, that's gone up to 380 <laughs> Now I've got a feeling there's another 300 Yeah. Plus you've got to get the x-rays and all this. So I'm... I'm <laughs> I'm down a bit. I feel like I've been robbed. Daylight robbery. 100%. I've got an example as well. Where we used to live, sunny Williamstown. The dentist, brand new fit out. The grouse fit out. Oh, the yeah. brand new fit I've, out. I've never had a feeling. <laughs> I've never had a feeling. You've had life. a feeling. 38 years of age. Oh, I did know that, which is wild. You've never had a feeling. Never had a feeling. Never needed or had a feeling. Did you not eat chocolate when you were growing up? Or? Yeah, I dabble a bit here and there. People tell me it's a bit more <laughs> That's impressive, mate. I'm yeah. impressed by that. Yeah, the it, beard. Is, it is what it is. It's, it's, you know, <laughs> I think it's more luck than anything. But... I go in there, new dentist. She gets me under the under the X-ray. Two. She thinks I need two, two fillings. And you've so never had one. A bloke that's thirty-eight, never had a filling. She's telling me two. Wow. So I'm like, all right, yeah, sweet. She goes, you want to do them today? I said, no, nah, let's not do them today. So I left. I said, <laughs> thanks, thanks. Left. Quick sell. <laughs> <laughs> left. Th- thought about it. Didn't feel anything. Same as you. Yeah. Nothing. Nothing there. And then I went and got when uh, now down in. God's country, sunny July. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, and I went and saw a fella and, you know, he had a modest fit out and looked like he was doing... <laughs> a modest fit out looked like he was doing things a bit more, you know. He's worried about the teeth and not the fit out. Keeping He's the doing o- the right keep, thing. Keeping He's the a- overheads tight. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He doesn't care about the fit out. He just cares about the client. That's what I'm hearing. He <laughs> about the client. This was a year ago. Yeah. Still nothing. Still, still no good. fillings. He said it was all good. You didn't need any. X-rayed it. Said, if I don't call you, so you don't know, need anything. And you know what? I'm the opposite to all of that. I'm every six months hit the dentist, and every six months they're they're filling me up. <laughs> oh, they just see dollar just, signs yeah, when you walk in, Benny. <laughs> Actually, I, I, to be I, fair, mate, I think we're silly to think that they're not sitting there with their own internal KPIs. Of course, go <laughs> so, yeah. and you've got your client. Let's upsell them something. They see Benny come in, they're like, "Hello, here we go." <laughs> <laughs> well, they, he gets he gets it on his little. He, he walks, his, in, <laughs> walks in drinking his beer. <laughs> oh, here we go. No, no, sugar. They, get, they get they get the X-ray up. How many times? It's oh, like yeah. it's like when, when you go and get your hair cut. They go, oh, what do you reckon looks good? And you go, yeah, awesome, Whatever. man. But yeah, they get the X-ray up and see the little crack, Shade. See and this. you're like going, 
There's no see the, crack see there. the shadow. The whole thing's a shadow. <laughs> yeah, I know. That's what they're telling me. You see the shadow there? Like, nah. Yeah, yeah. Oh, you need a feeling. But he, go, but he seems pretty serious. So go, oh, mate. Whack of you. What do I do? Do I ring up and cancel and just get my night card? Yeah, I reckon. I reckon. Uh, How can you? Yeah. You wait it out, man, yeah. until you start feeling it. I, I need a night it's card. Not, don't fix a problem you don't have, man. Until it's a problem. There's enough problems in life yeah. without fixing problems you, you don't, don't have. have. There you go. There's a bit of wisdom. Especially if you're running pearly whites like yours. Yeah, I know. Have a look at them, dude. But then, you know, do you. But then, like, it. it, it you know, you go into the profession. <laughs> it's like when a client tries to tell me how to build. Am I trying to tell the dentist how to be a dentist as well? Yeah. Do you trust yeah, a professional? I don't, I don't mind someone who would challenge a builder as it's well. It's like like with our next guest. You know, you want to build a pool? pool do you oh, or a landscape? Do you just get the, the way. You get the professionals to do the professional work. Yeah, that's true. I love that. That's true. And now I'm there. We're there. We're, We're at the there. intro. We're at the intro. We're at the it. intro. Hollywood. <laughs> <laughs> All right, boys. Welcome back to Australia's number one podcast. We are the little fish and we speak to the big fish about town. Are we actually number one yet? Each and every week. Yeah, I, I'm starting to believe we actually everywhere, are. Everywhere, everywhere. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> just manifested it. Uh, no, we're definitely number one, Dan. Uh, all right, boys. Today's guest has made a name for himself, creating award-winning landscapes and pools for over 30 years, co-founding Exquisite Gardens Australia at the ripe old age of 21. Hmm, what Early? Doing? What are you doing at 21? <laughs> no comment. In part to fund his surfing passion. It sounds like a bit of a lad, boys. He's a, he's a good boy, good lad. <laughs> his finesse for outdoors was quickly realised, seeing the next guest go to win over 20 landscaping titles to date. And, the, yeah, right. and our girl who does this is usually under, so that's probably under. 20, 22, 23. 28. <laughs> He's since spent 12 years at the helm of his own company and nine years at the head of the head landscaper on the block. Mm, so that should give it away now. Yeah. Bit of synergy. You're getting closer. <laughs> yeah, you should We're know now. Yeah. I only took him like a full season to hook us up. <laughs> <laughs> Five seasons hosting Open Homes Australia and he features on Australia's Best Pools. Mm. This guy's a busy boy. Three like TV this. shows he's on. I like this, yeah. I like this. Arguably his biggest job of all, however, was renovating his own family home over the last two years. Give it up for director of Franklin Group and one of Australia's most beloved landscapers, Davey Franklin. Yeah, Davey. Yeah, Davey. Davey. And I tell you, I, I get to see his gardens firsthand, so they're very nice, mate. It's a pleasure. It's a, and he did his best one, I reckon, this year on this year's season of the block in Gisborne, Davo. Hey, which 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 property? He got was to do it? Scotty Camps. Yeah. Oh, I heard about that. Yeah, I didn't. I didn't watch the season, but I had someone telling me about that Scotty was building one. He hasn't sold it yet, has he? No, Scotty? no, we're, we're holding on to that one at the moment. Oh. Yeah. So uh, you got to talk to the mic. Yeah, Dave. you got to go. Oh, lean, that's what, that's lean what the mic's for. Yeah, you got to <laughs> lean, <laughs> lean right in. Big night last night. Sorry, I didn't realise it's Australia's number one podcast. Yeah. <laughs> 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 A little bit nervous here. <laughs> All right, we'll go for it. Yeah. <laughs> coming yeah. off coming off a bit of an event so, too last night, Dave. Yeah, let's so. not talk about that. It's water. It's, it's got his water. Yeah. Yeah. No, great. <laughs> no, Darryl, we've got a fridge full over there. But, man, Dave, you do you have to lean right in, man. Oh, or you, shit. Yeah, right. yeah, yeah. Bring it, bring it, a bit bring it right right into you, man. Okay, sorry. Good to go. But he, no, he did it. Oh, he did his best design and best, I reckon, pull that I've seen firsthand this year on the block. Well, you know, being Scotty's house, we did have a lot of... Bigger budget than the uh, contestants, oh, yes. that's for sure. Scotty's yeah, got yeah. The, he's got deep pockets, Scotty. <laughs> <laughs> it's a lot easier getting paid from Scotty Cam than the contestants. That's what I'm going to say. So. <laughs> Tell you what, like I, I, I don't know, I don't know if I've said to you boys, I was a qualified landscaper. Do you know that? What? I'm a qualified landscaper. Anyway, what I was going to say is, um, <laughs> one one thing. Why, Dave? Why? Because it's all good now. Like it's a glor it's glorified now. It's on tally and stuff. So my yep. main, it's a burning question because I was a, a, a landscaper and I walked away because it was hard work. I felt like it was unrewarding and it was really tough because anyone could throw a trailer on the back of their car and drive around and call themselves a landscaper yep. and undercut the guys that are clearly like yourself that are talented and and whatever. Yeah, how do you mean? Just yeah, to get straight look, into it. What, yeah, how mean, did look, you break Yeah, hundred percent right. I mean, there's actually like you are you have qualified landscapers as you know, but it doesn't stop you from picking up a shovel and mm. as you said, grabbing a trail and starting your own landscaping mm. business. Yeah. So the lines are very blurred with that, you know. So you obviously get guys that are part of like Landscape Victoria. Um, generally if you are a member of that, you have to have your builder's license and mm. such. But it doesn't stop anyone else from starting to pave or do certain stuff. But you know, you can just get out of bed. The instant turf, bit of a pagola, yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I did that. Shout out hard K's back in the day. <laughs> <laughs> Me first business. You don't look like a landscaper, Benny. <laughs> <laughs> 
sorry, oh, I didn't. Yeah, well, I'm not offering a job. But- <laughs> no, no, you wouldn't, you wouldn't, you wouldn't want to give me one. I'm going to tell. I have to tell this quick story. Like, so I did land. I sort of just fell into landscaping. My, my brothers were shop fitters. My dad and I was like, I'm not going to be a fucking shop fitter. You know what I mean? Like, mm. so I, I tried landscaping, and I, I lived in London for a few years, and I was landscaping uh, Hammer Smith and Chiswick landscapes or something. Yep. And I remember it started snowing, and I looked at the dude next to me. I go, Hey, man. <laughs> She's fucking snowing, dude. And he looked at me and he goes, it's better than fucking rain and kept working. And I was like, oh, this. And I went home and I remember thinking, I don't think this is for nah. me, man. Well, this is hardcore. It's hard work, right? Yeah. Well, it sounds like Gisborne, really. We snow. Yeah. It. <laughs> so I know all about it, okay? Because I'm pretty sure this season on the block, and Dan will agree with me, I'm pretty sure there was only one day mm. and that was the last day that it didn't rain. Yeah, okay. Yeah. So that was probably the hardest slog I've ever seen. And when we talk about snow and uh, how cold it was, I mean, there's days there that was minus three. So, mm. you know, you're trying to motivate a team to get around and go oh yeah this is far who wants yeah. to be awesome. a landscaper yeah, yeah. Even yeah I thought, it's hard even work i thought geez i'm getting this so, <laughs> <laughs> i had to do a lot of quotes anyway so i left the side yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's what the boss does <laughs> dave, so dave why did you become a landscaper tell us well, that look to be honest i think we were saying before i actually had a passion for surfing and then one of my mates was a landscaper so we started landscaping to save up money to go overseas and surf and then i ended up meeting all these architects and stuff like that around uh Turak, and then we thought, oh shit, we're starting to get good at this. You know, and then next thing you know, in 1999, we won our first Australian Landscape Award. And I thought, hang on, here we go. We've got something else. So mm. I should have got out then, to be honest. But yeah. uh, <laughs> I kept going. So uh, you know, through business and landscaping and stuff like that, I'm pretty sure I've made every single mistake you can. You know? so <laughs> We've all been there. Well, even my account said, he goes, Dave, you've even invented ways how to lose <laughs> 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 I said, surely there's someone else. <laughs> so, but, uh, but I'm here still today. You know, so. But Dave, so then how did you know as a young guy, 20 something year old, you started your own business, how did you know to go to Turak and talk to all the good architects? How did you have the confidence to do that? Well, that's what we thought everyone was doing. <laughs> we just, just go to the best suburb actually, in Melbourne. and Well, to be honest, back then it, every, everything was in the paper, or local paper. So we thought, right, yeah, okay, well, Turak, that means money. You know, if I had my time again, well, they don't pay that well, Turak. That's why they're rich. Okay, so, <laughs> ah. but we put an ad in the paper, and it's, you know, the paper, remember? Yeah, like, the, the paper, yeah, 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 back yeah. in the old days. So I remember we put an ad in there, and we actually got one of these jobs, and it was on uh, Canterbury Road. It was quite big, and back then, like a big job was a hundred thousand dollars, and that was probably mm. in nineteen ninety seven. Now a hundred thousand dollars, big kids back then. Yeah, mm. probably equivalent to a million dollar job yeah. today. You know, so again, didn't make a cent out of it. All right, oh, yeah. but wow. we we started from that, and then that sort of leapfrogged into everything, and then obviously you know your sign writing and all that sort of stuff, and then again, as I said, yeah, we sort of thought right, yeah, the bigger the job, yeah, we've got something here, we can keep moving ahead and everything mm. like that. Well, I can tell you right now, we did not make a cent. Yeah, you know, we're living really? off really. Oh, mate, we're living off two dollar boss hog. Hot dogs at Seven Eleven. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, when it was uh, McCappy Day, we're like, this is awesome. Two dollar cheeseburger. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, we had fun. Like the biggest thing is, you know, when you're young and you're starting your business, you're like you've got, um, you know, you've got enthusiasm, you've got mm. everything, and you're thinking, geez, it's got to turn soon. It's <laughs> 20 years later, no worries. <laughs> but, um, but I think, you know, for anyone that's young out there, you know, and that's what business is about. I mean, you've got to have that enthusiasm. Mm. You've got to have a, a certain path. And sometimes that path isn't exactly where you want it to go. Um, and you don't know what business is going to do. I mean, we've seen it with COVID and all that sort mm. of stuff. But everyone talks the journey. The journey was this with us. It was like, go and have some fun. Mm. Build some great stuff. Hopefully get paid. Maybe win some awards. Hopefully get paid. Hopefully get paid. Uh, because well, if you're not getting paid, there's something wrong. Well, mate, when, when you're back there, you're very naive. You're without the quality. And when you're dealing with people like that up from Turak and stuff like that, they can sort of bear down on it. When you're new to business, they might go, well, we're not happy with that. And you'll turn around and go, all right, no worries. Yeah. Yeah. For instance, yeah. we had a guy that was, and this is ridiculous, and I don't want to say his name, but mm. you, <laughs> <laughs> you know who you are. You know, Tony, Tony. No. <laughs> but I remember doing this pre and like, it was my business partner and we, he was finished, he was ready to go to his wedding and stuff like that. And he's like, mate, I'm going to pay you guys, we're going to have champagne, at, you know. And he remember, walked out and he goes, the brick edge, it's 15 millimetres out. I want it ripped up and redone, 15 millimetres. Mm. Back then we've gone, oh yeah, you're right, 15 millimetres. If you told me that now, I'd just go, go shove it. You know? <laughs> so anyway, Tony, I remember. But, uh, <laughs> but I mean, it's, those mistakes teaches you, you know, to sort of, you know, how to combat that with clients now, you know. So yeah. you sort of got to work with those people and sort of go, well, look, mate, that's just, that's not right. You know, come on, let's settle on something, you know. So, um, but back then, you know, you know, getting to where we are now, 
again, yeah, I've learned every mistake, done every mistake, and uh, and invented hope, them. And, uh, said invented a rule book of mistakes. So, but I'm still here today. So. Uh, but that's why you're a weapon in business, right? Well, it's those mistakes that have. And um, I, think, I think it's that yeah. experience as well. Like yeah. back then, you thought, well, he's right, 15 mil out. But now, yeah. you know, you've, oh, you've, you've, it's you've, you've, you've yeah, uh, you've navigated uh, enough decisions that yeah. you can use your words and negotiate to well, get yourself around that. Well, the, the worst thing is. It's on the side of the garden bed, so the garden's growing over it. So <laughs> I got to see it. So that's, but back then I thought, geez, you're right. But now I'm like, bloody hell. You know, so, but, yeah. And it's, I think today, in today's business especially, you know, like what we find is that you know, when you have a client, okay, and they just say they've borrowed a lot of money from the bank, so the bank comes out, checks the job and everything like that, those people want blood from you. Okay, because they're paying that loan off for uh, 15, yeah. 20 years. Yeah. So they want to see everything and they're sitting over you the whole time. So, you know, when you're doing jobs and it's not bank loan, they're like, go go for it. So it's a lot easier to do deal with it. And yeah. that's what people are generally like. So if you've got a loan for the money, it's going to be a harder job. They're going to be over your back all the time. I never thought about that about landscaping. You're, you're pretty much the clients have moved into the home already. Yeah. So you've got to deal with the client being oh, good, there yeah. while you're a, actually working, looking yeah. over you. And it's a want, not a need yeah. as well, landscaping. Yeah. Well, well, it's a need to a degree. Yeah, well, it is. Pretty much, it's like a you know, home theatre system. They look at the back there going, all right, yeah, if you're putting in yeah. an invoice, yeah, and we had this the other day, if you put an invoice for uh, like cost plus jobs, yeah, you've got the guys out there, and every guy these days, you go out the front, they're on their phone yeah, like this. Yeah. So I put this bill in the other day, oh, and the oh, clients, clients go in, and they go, all right, that's great. How's this? Here's a guy sitting on the machine on the, on the phone. I've got, all right, deduct it now. <laughs> oh, no, how's this? That's it. So, you got to be on top of your boys. Yeah. You got to be also like the clients there. You got to remember they're mm. watching you all like the time. That's, that's kind of fair enough as well. But would you say, yeah. Dave? Because I, I, oh. I, we're on both sides, and I reckon being a client, yep. like if I went cost plus, or if I'm paying someone per hour, yep. and and people cost live plus. on a budget, right? Yep. Most people are living on a budget. Some people week to week or whatever. So they they need to get things done, yeah. and, and then you stand there watching a dude. You know, yeah, that's, that's enjoying like, that's his sort day. Of telling the boys that, hey, <laughs> yeah. boys, we're cost plus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. The Lim away. Limit the phones. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Well, look, to be honest, there's always one. Yeah, okay? yeah, there's yeah, always yeah, one. Yeah, and yeah, correct. And it's embarrassing. There's yeah. no doubt about it. Like, you're trying to put out this exclusive company, you're charging a, a premium price, and then all of a sudden you get this photo from saying that your guys are yeah. sitting on their phones and doing Tinder swiping. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, I'm not yeah, doing yeah, that. Yeah. But yeah, I wouldn't even know what Tinder's like. But, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but it's apparently, it's great. Talk apparently of, yeah. it's great on the job site. But, yeah. but, and that's what they do. The, the young kids these days, they're just like, right, yeah, there's the phone. Yeah, because yeah, we never had that, no, did we, we no. Nah. Can't, you, can't you just say they're online ordering soil and ordering your plants? For the <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like work to them. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, awesome. Hey, Dave, we hear a fair bit that it's not exactly about knowing where you're going, but it's about keep rocking up yep. every day and just sort of following and navigating it through. Yep. Um, you know, you started this from a young age. You, you know, you were a tradie at 15, had a business at 21. Yep. You know, talk about some of the some of the lows and we talk about the highs, but yep. what, are, what are some of these challenges yeah, that, look, that, that you did face and, you know, you know the lows? Where'd yeah. you go? Well, look, I think when we first started out, I mean, it's really hard and it's a good question too because basically with landscaping, like, it's not one of those things that you can start with just one person, okay? Mm. You need two, two to three people straight away, yep. okay? Yep. You're just not going to make any bank if you don't, yeah. okay? Mm. Because mostly, you, well, one, you don't have machines. Two, you don't have trucks. Everything you've got to hire as well. So... The sweet spots start with three, you know, it goes for six months or to a year. Then you go into to five people. That's not too bad. You start running two jobs. As soon as you get to seven, that's when you start going, okay, right, yeah, well, listen, I need an overdraft here because I've got to bankroll three jobs. Yeah. Okay, yeah. so you start sh spreading yourself really thin. And we worked that out straight away. We thought, yeah. well, well, hang on, five's really good. You can run one and a half jobs at a time. As soon as you get to seven, you run three. But your expenditures are out on three different jobs. So... You're thinking when you're quoting these jobs, you're obviously thinking, right, you quote them at like your best ability. Mm, you go, yeah. you look at a job, you go, oh, that'll take me five days. But really, <laughs> I'd quote at 10 days now. You know, so these are the yeah. mistakes that you sort of make, uh, okay? And yeah. then then you come to machinery and you go, oh, this yeah. is great. And I mean, who doesn't love buying trucks and machines? <laughs> I mean, come on. It's, 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 it's just like we work at a sand pitch, just my toys are bigger than yours. Yeah, 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 so, yeah, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, and that's what you love. You say, all right, yeah. And we would get all Montreal about it and go, nah, I want the brand new excavator. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> then you realise you've got to pay for it. Yeah. Then you go, right, yeah. yeah. Okay, so getting all these things, you come back to it and then you sort of leverage. You're still running these three jobs, right? Then you've got machines. 
Yep. Then you've got these overheads. You know, then you've labor, got these guys. Yeah. You've got labour. Yeah. Super. And yeah. let's be honest, yeah. the ATA does not miss you. Doesn't mm. miss you. No. Nah. Yeah. Nah, if you think they're not missing you, they're coming for yeah, you. Coming As they say, they're your sort of third business partner or your second, but they're yeah. your yeah. business partner. Yeah. yeah, that's it. So, I mean, and then we sort of went across everything and we all, always thought, okay, right, you know, quoted jobs. You know, like back then, as I said, like $100,000 was a, quite a big job. It's right? massive, yeah. Massive job back then. Profitability of it, yeah, you know, would be lucky if you walked around with a thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, that's 1%. the honest truth. Yeah, so yeah. It, and this is a fact there out there. Now I think every landscaper will back me on this. Anyone that's won a, a landscape award has lost money on that job because you put so much effort yeah. into it. Yeah. Okay, and you sort of get caught up with going, mm. wait, this is great. So you've got to look at those jobs as a marketing thing. Yeah. Okay, so yeah. You use that. But when you come back and do your cash flow, you go, hell. Shit, mm. I'm not going to Bali. No, I know. <laughs> I, 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 yeah, I, I know firsthand because I genuinely started yeah. a, a landscaping business when I was, I think I was 18 or 19, yeah. hard case of landscaping, like I said before. And it was hard, man. It was really, really hard to um to make money. Yeah, yeah. like you said, I, there was two of us, and we'll run around doing instant turf yeah. and and whatever. It was it? Yeah, it was. A, it yeah. was a tough grind. Well, you, you said it before. I mean, when we, if we go back to say the people that were starting their business, so we said anyone can get out of bed and start landscaping. The one yeah. thing that I really hate, and this is what's different between landscaping and the pool business, anyone can go into a wholesale nursery and pay out wholesale. Yeah. So you try and sell that, put your retail price on for your markup, and they'll go, well, mate, I'm just going down the road here. I can walk in, use my mate's card and buy. Mm -hmm. Plant and mark or whatever it is. Plant, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And it's sort of like, well, mate, you look like you're ripping people off. Yeah. Whereas if it's in the pool industry, that's a standard, like there's, there's your retail rate, and they yeah. won't sell to the public. It's got, it's got a barrier to entry, yeah. that type 100%. of business. Where so, everyone's, yeah. So you're better off telling the clients, this is the price. This is my margin. Let's get rid of the arguments, okay? And just put yeah. it straight straight on, you know. So yeah. and that's what we've learnt, you know, like come out with everything, tell everyone, you know, when I go and give a client their price, I normally do it on a Thursday night. Because I know they're going to have a bowl of red wine. And once they've, they've seen my price, they fall off the floor. So I fin finish the wine, give me a call tomorrow, and we're good to go. You know? so, <laughs> so I always do that, you know, but never do it on a Friday night because that's when they've found their second bottle of wine and yeah, they yeah. want to add everything in. They're yeah. half pissed and they're like, right, okay, <laughs> I'm just quoting nothing here. Yeah. Yeah, so, but, you know, and that's what I'd say. Uh, you know, we learn all these, these tricks and stuff like that. But um, you know, getting back to the teams as well, you know, I think that we, we started with seven. That worked really well. I think the sweet spot for us, and this is probably like a, uh, we would say like a small big business in landscaping would be, say, around you know, 11 people, okay? And we always called it the Franklin 11, okay? So, <laughs> yeah, and we yeah, loved yeah. it. Franklin's and the Franklin good. 11 was, was amazing, you know? So... We probably, the profitability out of that, we could run three jobs, no problems, have the truck, you know, sweat going between each jobs and stuff like that. Um, overhead's not too bad at that sort of stage there. So, you know, yeah. that's, not, if you've got a lot of work and there's plenty of work around, you know, for anyone that's want to start a business, I think that's where you sort of look at, you know, you can run sort of three jobs because, you know, if you've got a small um, sort of business, you might have one job that may be on hold, waiting for permits or something mm. like that. So you can swap the team to yeah. a different job. It's all about cash flow, as we say. You know, so the more that you're combating that, the better it is. But um, yeah, we've gone from 11, and now I think I'm 37. Yeah. So no, I just paid the wages last night, mate. I was going to say, what's this? Because we, you know, we're, yeah. our team's growing as well. I remember I was sitting with my hairdresser when we first started our business four or five years ago. I won't say the figures or whatever, yep. but I remember talking to him saying how much our expenses were. And we were at our first ever office back then. Oh, they were nothing. And, and oh, they were, they were relative yep. to now, they were nothing. I remember sitting there saying to him, going, dude, I don't fucking know how we're going to even make the money to pay yep. this shit. You know what I mean? <laughs> like, how do you even, how does a business make that kind of money to yep. pay that kind of money? And back then it was nothing. And now, like, I don't even deal with it. That's. In business <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah to your point, like it is, it it's scary. So yeah. I can't imagine how oh, crazy that look, is. Look, it, it definitely is, you know, and I think there's a lot of emotion that goes into it as well. And this is, again, what you experience when you're young in the business is that you probably use too much emotion in it because the money sit in there and you're thinking, shit, all right, I haven't been paid. How do I go home to my wife and kids and say, listen, I've been paid this week. We're going on Christmas holidays. Yeah. This guy owes yeah. me $20,000. Yeah. He wants 15 Because you're the last to get paid too, right? Yeah. Well, yeah. thanks to Dan, the builders, they take it <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> so, And the architects take it before yeah, us. <laughs> yeah, the architects, get they did, as we said earlier, you know, like there's nothing left. So yeah. I always look at the job and the great thing that you were saying there, but you look at like a, a build, right? And we'll say, right, okay, the budget's $200,000, $250,000. By the end of that job, once Dan's taken all his money, mm. 
I've got twenty five thousand dollars left. Yeah. So as, as we said, twenty five grand. You're like put in a pool, a pergola, and mate, you get a, Christmas <laughs> and a driveway. Car, that's, about it. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's, that's all we're going to offer you. So, but um, and that's what I think that um, your business. And I hate saying it. I, I think I'm p- probably putting it down. Like it is fun. Like there's no doubt about it. I mean, like we do a great job. You know, being a landscaper out there. I mean, like it's as I said, you've got creative control on a lot of things. And you know, what's not to like about digging in mud, you know? So it's um And it's rewarding, I reckon, landscaping. That's it, what I used to like about it when you used to look and that's why I like shop fitting when we did it. Yeah. Yeah. When you finish it and you stand back and you look at it and you go, Fuck, yeah, that's sick. And, and landscaping's yeah. a big yeah. one like mm. that. Yeah. Because there's no there's no parameters that you need to work within. Whereas, yeah. you know, in a shop, you've got to have your shop front, and there's certain rules you've got to play within. Yeah. Landscaping, you're limited by your imagination yeah. in a lot of cases. So then you can really just push the boundaries and then you finish it. You go through snow, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> wet rain, yeah. that camaraderie yeah. that you get with the boys digging holes, yeah. you know, and then you look back and you go, fuck. Look at that man! That's yeah, it's one of the best Instagram pages you'll see. Yeah, you yeah, just yeah. Scroll and go, wow, yeah. wow. So I loved it. I was just yeah. weak as piss and couldn't. Di- you know, I used to get cold and yeah. couldn't dig. And well, it's, there's a lot that's changed these days, yeah. though, as well. So I mean, we start with. Uh, I mean, what we've got six landscape architects that work in our firm. So we design everything, we construct everything, and we build pools. So we've got landscape architecture company. We've got the landscape construction and and the pools yeah. as well. So yeah. we get our foot in the door with the design. Yeah. And once you've built that relationship. They, the client doesn't want to go with anyone well, else. You're the best person. That's, yeah. that's, that's optimal. Yeah, and that's, yeah. and that's what fine. we sort of do. So you kind of control your own destiny with the job because you make sure that the designers are always involved. You know, make yeah. sure that they're all over the top of it. So we make sure they come out to the site all the time. And you know, it's basically the blueprint for us at Franklin. You know, so it's um, you know, it starts with them and then you know, goes to construction and does the pool and everything like that. For a client to get everything under one umbrella, it's a lot easier for them. And Dan, you say this is a good point because you, you say this all the time. So one of the biggest issues is when you're, as the builder or the yep. landscaper, when you're trying to deal with someone that's gone to a different designer that's gone and, you know, they've gone there with a budget, the designer doesn't give two shits, they've just gone and designed yeah. something insane, then they come to you yep. and you go, yeah, man, you're not even close. Like, yep. I can't get near that sort of thing. You get to control that. 100%. And be able to go, okay, we, you know, we we know the budget from the outset. We can control the narrative right yep. through and gu- and guide yourself into the job. Well, you hit the hit it right there because designers will do this, mm. like it, especially if they're really fresh. They'll look at a sideway and they'll have everything <laughs> down mm. there. You've got like you've got a hundred thousand dollars down the sideway. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Your budget's down <laughs> the sideway. Hey, yeah, dude, just put synthetic turf. Yeah. The dogs are gonna love it. Yeah. They're not gonna see it. Shut the drapes. That's it. Yeah. Talk talk about the party at this side, you know. So yeah. you got to look over the designs and stuff like that. And I think these days, especially, it's got a lot more creative. You know, in the last ten years. Mm-hmm. Okay, so you know, we used to go into clients' houses twenty years ago and be like on the back of a cement bag. Like, I'm thinking of doing this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was you know, having a fag at lunch. Oh, this is all right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So and that's that has all changed. You know, so you see companies now that are either you've got the design or they've got the construction. And there's a lot of guys that have survived just out of the construction, but work for the same designers all the time. Yeah, they've, they've yep. Yeah, so it's become a must, you know, that if you are, you know, doing a landscape, that you have to have a design now, you know. Yeah, and, yeah uh, you've got to partner with someone, yeah. You, you do. But, yeah, as you said before, and, you know, Dan, we've spoken about it, and I've worked with Dan before, and you, you do some of the pictures, and this is what really shits me. Everyone sees a 3D. Mm. They go, what, sold, done. Mm. I go, we don't work off 3Ds, do we, Dan? No. It's 2D drawing, mm. okay? If you want a pretty picture, Great. No, I was, I'll charge you for that, but I'm not working off that. Yeah. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But these days, you know, as we say, is that it's come so far with it, you know, and uh, there's so many different, you know, to keep up to date with everything. You know, we always say that every job, I always go, oh, that's a modern classic. So, oh, there's a classic modern. Oh, is it really? You yeah, think? I've got every genre. I go, yeah. Classic modern. I'm, I'm, thinking, I'm, I'm thinking modern. I go, yeah. Oh, Susie's classic. <laughs> is, that, is that what mine is, Dave? Dan at playing yeah, out. Is that a classic you're, modern? You're, mate, Dan's thinking, yours is, fuck, that's what he told me. <laughs> Dan, yours is next level. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's next level. <laughs> next level with mate, a mate, bit of classic. No, no, I'm going to bet it. Yours is the new black. Oh, yeah, <laughs> good. good. <laughs> but, um, but it, it definitely has. I mean, like it's it's come a long way, and you know, it's um, as I said, I I look at the young guys that are coming up, and I see the enthusiasm. Going, mm. shit, how much money are you going to lose in the first year? But anyway, yeah. so, how, so hard, it, how but, hard is it to get 
get good good workers. I'd imagine it'd be and, pretty tough. Look, to be honest, it is so hard at the moment. Yeah. And uh, I hate saying this to, be, to the young blokes, but I've actually hired a lot of guys that have gone into retirement and pulled them out of retirement. And you might as well call my company Dad's Army at the moment, yeah. mate. <laughs> <laughs> guys doing backs. Oh, geez, they, <laughs> they, so they seem to do well, the old Dad's Army teams. They, they do. They, look, they're slow, they're steady, but it's done methodical. Yeah, I don't, yeah, get, yeah, I don't yeah. get callbacks. Yeah, okay? yeah, so yeah. the guys are too busy, mm. you know, as we say then. Fair enough, everyone's happy to get out of work. But, you know, not like running and you just see dust and the barrows on the yeah, ground yeah, and the yeah. shovels on the ground. Looking at their phones. Yeah. Looking at the phones. Man, so. it's up on the wall yeah, up there, Dave. Set. Slow is smooth, smooth yeah. is fast. Well, yeah. and, and, the, and the old <laughs> boys know that, right? You only got to look at Geelong Football Club. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Their right, dad's yeah. army, oh, you know. Oh, 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 move on, move on. Crowbar them. Yeah, crowbar them. Dave, I just want to want to go back. None of that shit, Bonnie. You're saying you're saying it like the whole industry shifted a lot in the last 10, 15 years. I'm going to put it back onto the Franklin team because I reckon when you first entered the block, yep. it was the first time we really in seen the lounge rooms. we really seen a, a really good design on the block for a backyard. Yep. And I reckon that's when the shift started happening. And then you came back every year in the block and became this character, yeah. Dave Franklin. Yeah, and well, I think that's when the shift happened. Well, pretty much like yourself, Dan. I just kept rolling up. No one yeah. asked me. I just kept going. <laughs> 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 oh, we, we don't I saw, even get paid. Saw, we just yeah, rock up. I saw a bit of a gap. They were like, hey, they're here. They go, oh, Dave, you're ready for camera? Go, yeah. I'm good to go. Yeah. <laughs> so I just kept kept rolling up every year. So I thought yeah, I'll, cool. I'll take this spot. I'll be the landscaper of the block. And was that a marketing thing as well at the start? Was because uh, I imagine you weren't making money at, yeah. in the initial yeah, seasons. So, yeah. so and, people who don't know, Dave's first year as uh, yeah. the landscape was my first year as a contestant. Oh. Yeah. We started together. Yeah. And were you the red did door. you landscape yours? And so Dave landscaped um, a couple of doors down. Yeah. Um, and, but then we did a challenge house, and I tried to get Dave to come on and work for us, but the boys cracked the shits and said, "No, yeah. you can't have him." Uh, yeah. Yeah, so there you go. But you're right. I mean, I, I saw the opportunity to get on the block and I thought, wow, this is great. And um, yeah, I thought, well, I don't, I don't mind the camera. Let's yeah. have a go. <laughs> <laughs> Someone's got to do it. And then, um, you yeah, know, I actually hand built that job, didn't I? Yeah, you I, did. Yeah, we actually come out with something that I thought was amazing. Great. We lost. You know, and I was like, shouldn't have lost. This is ripped. This is bullshit. <laughs> oh, I hate the block. <laughs> oh, I'll come back next season. Yeah. Did, 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 did you notice? Sound like you. Did you notice fuel on the fire straight away? So, did, yeah. do you notice when when the block? Because I know you know known Dan for years. So when Dan's shooting, it's weird, right? When he's around, it's on, but when yeah. it's, it's, the timing doesn't line up. So when um. When it's airing yep. and you're on, do you notice like an instant Yeah, in 100%, 100%. Look, I think that, uh, and I was saying this to Dan earlier, I mean, when you go onto the block, okay, it's a great show. We all love it and all that sort of stuff. Um, it's probably, you know, obviously one of the biggest shows in Australia. You're going to get business. Now, if you go on and you just say like you're one person, like a plaster or something mm -hmm. like that, you go on there, you cut your prices, you, you know, just suit the contestants and stuff like that. And if yeah. you think you're going on there for marketing mm -hmm. when there's only one of you, you get one job and you're stuffed. Mm. You yeah. know what I mean? So it works for people that have got sort of six or seven people because you can get, I think the most I've had in, in a week was uh, was 2,000 inquiries. Wow. Yeah. From that the was from Elston Week when I did Josh and Elise. Oh, you did a good backyard there. So yeah. I got you know, 2,000 um, inquiries. Yeah, so, no, so is that having multiple people on the, with the T-shirts on? And yep. That's, it's just oh, presence. that's what you mean it's by just, just having presence. one dude in a plastic yeah, type. It's yeah, really just Dave team, Franklin. Got yeah. the hat on now. Like, yeah, 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 that's, yeah, yeah. Well, I'm saying, like, basically, you've got Number to get Number one podcast, from... you've got to wear yeah. the hat. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I mean, like, you've got to look at it. I mean, if you go in on a TV show like that, you go, right, okay, what am I going to do? I'm, I'm, I'm over there to have some fun. You know, something to tick off the bucket list of being on TV. I'm there to market the business. How am I going to do this? Yeah. But you've got to get ready for it as well at the same so time. You're, so you're getting stuff printed. You're going, boys, here's the new kit. What about yeah, Dave goes block. more steps than that. He's actually talking to supplies. He's getting everyone yeah. ready to come on the block. Yeah, he's yeah. going. He's pre-organising yeah. everything. So, so, are you able to do deals like that where you can go? You know what? Oh, you're going to supply my soil. Yeah. So you're like the Rob D deck with yeah. the fantasy <laughs> thing, you know I mean? the, the Rob well, D deck. Again, I just man. I just made myself that position. So, <laughs> but, but that's, that's crazy. And yeah. the block, they, the, the executives and that they don't have problems. Well, with love like, him. What yeah, what, what, awesome. what happened was like I started getting all the supplies ringing me. Yeah, and yeah, I was like, all yeah. right, hang on. Wait, I'm a middleman. There's another job here. Right, yeah. right, yeah. <laughs> Jules, I've got this one, mate. Yeah, no, yeah, I've got yeah. some supplies here. Yeah, Scotty, just pay me for that really, soil, mate, dude. All right, I'll that. They go, we'd love to get on TV. Just hold on. Jules, <laughs> yeah, yeah. can we get that? Yes, good to go. All right. <laughs> no worries. Those who don't know, so, Jules is our Jules boss. Is boss. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah. So, uh, He's the founder, yeah? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. So And look, I mean, it's sort of, I mean, 
you try and be as fair as what you can. <laughs> People try and want to get the products on there, and we understand it and stuff like that. I think the best way, and Dan will probably agree with this, is that if you've got a product and you want to get it on the block, if you sit there and go, right, yeah, okay, I want my product on the block, and you know, it might be only like a, I remember it was a $350 fire pit, and this lady was going off, and we're like, no offence, it's 350 bucks, you want us to do a whole movie length mm. thing about this fire pit. I said, <laughs> sorry. But you come on the block, and you know, if you're a good person, and you say, look, we'd obviously would love some TV, but if it doesn't happen, we're just happy with photos and stuff like that. Nine times out of ten, you're going to be on TV. Yeah, you if you keep asking for it, yeah. the producers is going to. This guy's giving pissing me off. Yeah. You know, so yeah. you got to work in with them. You got to. You got to work in. Yeah. You, well, you got to be nice with Dan and Keith as well. Oh, you know? yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he's talking about the big dogs now. There other, there's other landscapers as well, right? Uh, but you're recognised as the guy. You know, yeah. I was at a mate's house last Friday, and he, he's in Geelong, and he was saying, I can't remember the the guy's name, but he was showing me his plans. He's going, Oh, I've got the guy from the block. I'm going. Do ya? Yeah. <laughs> Said, we've got the guy from the block. Which guy have you got? You know what yeah. I mean? And, and it was a different guy. So have you got other guys cut, nipping at your heels? Yeah. Trying all, to steal oh, your... All the time. Yep. All, all the time. I don't know what Every it is. Year. Every year. I mean, it's sometimes like, uh, to be honest, I try to be nice to all of them, you know, but they they have something against me, you know, and it's all mm. like, I'm just by myself. I'm like, hey, I'm here to be friends, but, you know, so, yeah, yeah. but... They're always trying to beat us. There's no doubt about it. There's, there's a, there's, it's competitive space. There's tension. Yeah. Yep. Com- no, competition for attention 100%. Is real. And yeah. I'll be honest, I, I love it. I, I strive on comp- competitive stuff. Yeah. Okay. So I sort of overthink everything. I'll be like, okay, right. Yeah. I'll put forward the plan and I'll go, right. And then I'll go back over it three times and I'll go, right. And it, we, when you start the block, it's generally a Monday, you have to get everything in line on the Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, because you've got to bring it home on the Thursday, mm. Friday, Saturday. There's never been a block that I have not finished till nine o'clock in the morning on a Sunday morning. You know, yeah, so yeah. you hit the Thursday and you start bringing it out. But the best thing is, don't go look at the other landscapes because in case it's amazing, you could put yourself down. So <laughs> yeah, yeah. shit, I'm stuffed here. So that's the number one rule. Never go and look at yeah. anything else. Get Just behind focus yourself, on your, focus yeah. on what you're doing and stuff like that and get something brilliant. Um, yeah, it's, it's, I'd have to say it creates so much anxiety with me and stuff like that. You hate doing it. But that when you finish it, mm. you go home, you go, thank God, I'm done it. And mm. then you wait for, what, three months before it comes goes on there. TV. Mm. And you go, geez, that was so yesterday. Do you, do you watch Do you watch it back? Yeah, I do. Yep. I do because uh, my kids uh, reckon They love it, yeah. They always say I talk funny on TV. So, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, so I do watch it. But, uh, I mean, I have to say, you know, we've, we've been watching it for, for ages. But, you know, you I know everyone on the block pretty much. So it's not bad sort of seeing your friends and seeing what's mm. happening because... Family. Well, when you've seen, when you're at the block, you, what you see and how they produce it is totally different than mm. what you think. You know, so you'll be thinking, oh, here's this point coming up, and you go, no. well, I didn't even show it. No. <laughs> yeah. Wasted a whole day. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> you well, know, it's always our scenes together. <laughs> oh, they didn't make it. <laughs> yeah, I think, I think with Dan and I, I think we were doing one, it was about soil. And they go, I think Dan goes, what do you got, Dave? We go, soil. And he goes, <laughs> Where'd you get it? Out of the ground. Yeah. <laughs> and we turn around and we go, soil, soil works. <laughs> soil works. Love it. So, didn't, didn't go near that yeah. one, did it? No, that one. No, <laughs> it sounds like a lead balloon. <laughs> oh, amazing footage. So I love it. I love it. There'll be another one rating show, I guess. Yeah, good. <laughs> so, Take it. But I mean, every time I think Dan and I do, we do a lot of We stuff, do a lot. So we, I mm. mean, we talk concrete. Yeah. We talk mulch. <laughs> and are they are they scripted when you nah. oh, no, no, no. Dave will come up to me two minutes before the camera. Yeah. We've got to talk about mulch, we've got to talk about soil. And there's yeah. no and, and we just, just go, okay. Yeah, we yeah. just know we've got a banner. Yeah. yeah, he'll turn around and go, Dave, what are you, he's so excited about it. I can't wait. Calm down, it's, just, it's just the mulch, mate. It's only mulch, mate. <laughs> yeah, yeah. He goes, but it's black. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well <laughs> Dan, yeah, I got this from soil works. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, but Dave, is it fair to say that the block really helped the career of the Franklin? Yeah, it definitely did. It definitely does. Um I mean it's made me... Is that your best investment you've made? 100%. It, it, it has. It's, of time it, it, and, of, yeah. Look, of time and everything like that, um, you know, I'm proud of what we've put into the t- TV industry with the with the block and stuff like that. You know, again, I've got to thank, you know, all the people that are in the block for giving us that platform. But um, it definitely has, you know, pushed my business and, mm. you know, pushed myself as a person as well because when you're doing jobs like that, you know, you've got criticism that comes as well. Yeah. And yeah. that's... And we find yeah. that with TV, you know. Yeah. So if I get called, you know, that double... 
chin fat dude with everyone by the time I kept going TV puts kilos yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it, it does yeah, yeah. <laughs> I hope that's, I know, a, I hope no, that's no, a skinny no, camera no that's a skinny <laughs> camera <laughs> <laughs> it's a fish eye good. But, but it does and it, it, it was saying like yeah, when, you, when you're looking at all these things you know, people will love to bring you down and stuff like that you, I've tall learned poppy. to tall poppy yeah. 100% so I've learned to you know, embrace it if not laugh at it and sort of go yeah. oh okay well if you're taking the time out of your life to hate me mm. I said well I'm still working. See yeah. you later. So, well, they care enough. That's what they say. They right? they, whether they like you or hate yeah. you, as long as they're talking yeah. about you or they're engaged well, with you, then, then you're winning. Them. You know. And as I said, if you ask me where I'd be today, you know, uh, 12 years ago, when you know, 10 years ago when we started the block, I wouldn't have even said no, I'd, I'd be here. You know, I thought, yep, no, as I'd be landscaping. But to the jobs that we've been doing, the awards that we've won, the people we've met, the shows that we work on. 100% the block has made that for me, you know. So, so Dave, I want to ask that. So when you started the block back in 2011, yep. what, what were the size of the jobs then c- to compare to what you're doing now? Well, Just so we can, yeah, m- m- money-wise? Yeah, money-wise, the uh, average job for me would have been back then probably $80,000. And that's still 80. pretty big, right? Like from my experience, yep. like 80 grand is still a serious... Yep. Yeah, and it, then, it is, but you don't get a lot for that. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so, and then but, today, well, then what are you sort of rolling now? Look, our average job would be half a million dollars. You know, <sighs> yeah. You know, so... Um, we've, we've got jobs, as I said, that's up to three million dollars. <whistles> I've got jobs that are, you know, I think our smallest is about 140. So, but when you've got, are you building a house as well? For no, that's what I'm this is landscaping. No, three million dollars. Yeah. My cousin does that. It's crazy landscaping. It's a pool, pool shout yeah. out, Trina. So pools, because yeah. you go into the pools. Franklin pools. Well, how much? Yeah. Is, what's the yeah the top end of a pool worth these days? <laughs> uh, you just well, showed me the one. old infinity. Yeah, well, I've got one at the moment, and you'll cry. It's it's over a million dollars. <sighs> For, for a pool but I mean this is got yeah, paint the picture well is that, is that like a resort you're at a resort <laughs> aren't you no, someone's backyard <laughs> someone's yeah. backyard but it's <laughs> look, it's like uh, what is it like the Bellagio with the lights that go down so yeah. just to have these water jets going over it we had to fire these in from Canada they actually just come in yesterday so, they're so like, the pool's spitting water in like yeah, a water no, show. No, I've got I've yeah, the Bellagio Hotel. I've, yeah, yeah, it goes to music. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so it'll go all yeah. the way down, boom, 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 with, with these ah. lasers. So you know with the Crown Casino. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. we got that. So I think we paid, it was about $175,000 just Jeez. for these laser jets that sit in the pool. Would I do it again? I don't know. <laughs> of course you would. Course well, you we would. haven't turned them on yet, so we'll see if they work. So, but, uh, yeah, these are the things that you get. I mean, again, getting back to where we've gone with our industry and stuff like that. Nothing's uh, out of, you know, as I say. Nothing's too big. Nothing's too big these days, you know. Too and, crazy. You know, to be able to get the clients that we have has been amazing. And you're basically building stuff that you would love, you know, other landscapers and pool builders would love to do. Yeah. And we're sitting there every day going, all right, well, let's do this. I'm... Put a big concrete slide in. If we've got these ones, maybe we get some more jets. <laughs> and my client's going, do we need more? I'm like, okay. Yeah, are you still uh, part of you? Yeah, 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 I'm trying to think where else. I'm looking around. I'm like, where can we put them? Can we buy next door? Yeah, if we buy next door, I'll, I'll put a moat around that. So, yeah. but, um, and that's, I mean, look, that's the fun side yeah. of, of doing this stuff. You know, fair enough. Like Everyone looks at the dollar value, but the excitement level that you get to do and go to work and go, all right, well, look at me. And then, you know, it's, just like, it's like your screensaver on your phone. You'll go to the other mate. So, what are you doing? The $80,000 pulse? Oh, just a mill. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no biggie. Yeah, no, just, just a mill. Just a mill, mate. The boys that's get all, to get in for a swim to test it out once, <laughs> once she goes Well, live. 100%, but you don't want to see me with my top off. So. <laughs> <laughs> Dave over the pool. Uh, Dave, what I love is, you know, he started out being a landscaper and we've sort of, and we've touched on this with Dan, like Dan, tradey background but took the opportunity to rock up to the block and, and do your bit and keep rocking up each day and get your company that exposure. Like, yep. you know, hats off to you for, for actually sort of seeing another way of doing it, getting that PR piece going, probably stepping outside of your comfort zone a bit to yeah. do it as well, you know. You could keep going along, doing landscape and doing jobs with this, but obviously you're somebody that thought, I'm going to have a crack here. I'm yeah. going to take that opportunity. Well, 100%, as I said before, I'd pretty much I just kept rocking up. I just yeah. go, right, yeah, need a landscape? I'm here, you know, yeah. and that's what I was doing all the time. And then I sort of created my own role in, the, in there. Yeah, it then, sounds, sounds like yourself, like, yeah, 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 yeah. So, and, and that's, I think that's what we, we all, all have. And so it's such a fast-paced show that if you're there, the camera guys go, all right, you, come here. All right, yeah. let's, let's do it, you know. Um, yeah, it's, as I said, it is extraordinarily hard doing yeah. this show. You're like you, you, there's never a time that you get to go home early and go, 
Yeah, we, 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 get, we get the pleasure, the clock's yeah. we, we get to have the pleasure to hang out with Dan in while he's filming and stuff. Yeah. We, we get to see him. That's it. That's it. So steaming. Yeah. Oh, hundred percent. And I mean, I've got to say, the funniest thing is seeing these two guys come in to to you. And I, I see him coming for me, and I'll be like, oh for fuck, <laughs> <laughs> with the cameras behind us. <laughs> and, and I remember Checked this. Out. I remember this. These guys chewed me like out on this foundation. Like, oh, oh you can't, be, you can't be building this. You can't be doing it. But, the foundation's like freaking a meter. I'm trying to go, but, but, like, no, nah, don't, yeah, that's fucking bullshit. <laughs> yeah. I go, mate, the wall's 400 mil high. Yeah. So you can't be going a meter down. I'm like, mate, this is not even retaining. I'm like, so this went to Australia. And if you have a, actually have a look on my Google reviews, it says the guy doesn't know how to do foundations. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> so that's still there. No, I'm not joking, no, right? No. So, Blame Keithy, not yeah. me. <laughs> so the funny thing is, I think it got to, uh, it was like Saturday afternoon, and I see him, they were measuring me steps yeah. and that, and I saw him come around, I'm going, no, you fucking asshole, <laughs> get out of here. And Dan looked at me and he goes, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> that's that's it, good, yeah. I thought, I'm not copping that one off you boys. <laughs> that's it. But, yeah, as I said, look, you have a lot of fun with doing it and um, yeah, definitely out of the comfort zone. And yeah, yeah. I think well, one of the funniest things was when I first started filming, I didn't realise this, I thought you had to talk really fast. And the mm. producer got going, Dave, so I didn't <laughs> understand. I'm like, trying to get everything in. Try, try, yeah. you know, because everyone's going, high energy. You know, yeah, all yeah, gusto. Yeah. And I'm thinking... They're like, mate, we cannot understand you. <laughs> what language yeah. are yeah. you talking? Anyway, yeah. five years later, I've gone, really? Okay. I've watched myself on team. I go, shit, I can't even understand it. Yeah. So, so, so now I go, hi. I'm How are you doing? <laughs> I'm Dave. It's fantastic to be here today. So, but, um, but yeah, and that was, it. I suppose, getting out your comfort zone. Yeah. You know, getting a little bit nervous and stuff like that. And, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, just simple things, I suppose, you know, like looking down the camera and stuff. And he would know this as well. Like, you stare down the barrel, you look at yourself, gosh, shit, I got fat up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not the right camera. Yeah. What's going on? Yeah. <laughs> so, but it's all, put all of that together, put landscaping together. It's kind of fun. Yeah, yeah, it sounds like a wild ride, man. It sounds like yeah. a well, like well, Dave, awesome now you've started, ride, two sh- you've started production yeah. companies and two shows yeah. on the back of that. Well, as I, well, I've learned how to slow the voice down. Yeah, so, good. Yeah, so, but no, I've had the opportunity from the block to work with another show called Open Homes Australia and uh, I've done a couple of other various shows and then we saw a gap in the market. You know, this was probably three years ago. There was no pool show. All right, yeah. then there's actually only, I think when we look at it, there's only around about 10 pool shows in the world. And everyone loves a pool. Pools, that's, that's why, that's yeah. why I and asked them. Yeah. Like, the landscape and what's, yeah, what's so, the pools going for? So basically what we did, we I put the concept through to the guys at uh, Open Homes Australia and I said, well, listen, I've got this idea. So anyway, we kept knocking on the door Channel 9 saying, right, yeah, we need to do this. You know, like Australia's got more pools per capita in the world. That's oh, fact. Really? So, yeah. So like you, Queensland especially. Mm. Okay. So why, why have we got that? There's no pool show. Now, the most common thing that I get asked when we're selling a pool, how does it go? What, what, what do we do? What is, you know, what's going on? So no one has been educated on, okay, there's your permit process. Mm. There's this. You've got to go through all these steps. It takes about 12 weeks. Now, people go to me, and this is, people are going to hate me about this, but it's fact, okay? When you go to a pool show, you see the line is out the door, okay? Now, they'll go, it's a pool show special. You're buying a pool, yeah. but they don't realise you've just bought the pool for sixty, seventy thousand dollars, but you've still got a, a pool barrier. You've got a permit. You've Excavation. Got, you've got like, a big yeah, you've got all, you've got plumbing, got all this sort of stuff. Plumbing, so access. All, so all these add-ons as this pool show special. It's not such a special. Mm. Yeah. If that makes sense. Yeah. So we saw a gap, and we thought, let's educate the clients. Let's show some great pools. And so what we do with the show is we show some great stuff. We start with a good pool, and then. What we do in the middle of it, we show some achievable pulls, like it might be yeah. stuff that's thirty thousand dollars, because you, you're going to lose the audience if it's all your yeah. half a million dollar, million dollar pulls. Yeah, yeah. So yeah. what we do is try and showcase. Well, you can get a pull for thirty thousand dollars. You can get a rib. What are those ones? The yeah, yeah, kidney shape. The kidney. That's yeah, right. you can get the, the old kidney. kidney. But that, they're coming back. Are they? The yeah, kidneys they're, are coming. They're, they're, they're <laughs> back, mate. Those East Donny's coming back. Don't <laughs> <they? Yeah. laughs> but I mean, this, and I think the biggest thing for us was to obviously educate everyone. And so what we did through the whole series of the show, we built a pool from permits mm. designed. So with 10 episodes, there's 10 steps of doing a pool. 
So we did that so we could show everyone this is what you're ex expecting. Yeah. From price, factual stuff of what you should expect with the pool. The issues and... Well, that's... Yeah, all that. The key is the education to the audience out there because they yeah. see these deals, they think they can get the pool in for 50 grand, but yeah. there's so much more yeah, to Australian it. Australian nah. public love that stuff, right? Yeah. The DIY yeah. pools and well, landscaping yeah, and building. Well, COVID yeah. pushed the price up. So you go back, say, three, four years ago, Fiberglass pool, you could get a fiberglass pool and spa for around about forty five, fifty thousand dollars Installed? Like, installed. Oh. 100000 to $110,000. Just now. a cheap, like, like, just, like so the That's bottom end, yeah. So the bottom end of a pool is a hundred grand. Yes. Or oh, could, it's I, I, roughly. Yeah, yeah. So if you want pool and spa, so like oh, eight, yeah, by, yeah. eight by four fiberglass, you, you're talking sort it's of, you're nice around, about, yeah. around about $100,000. Wow. So your average pool that we do, pool, spa, fully tiled, uh, in floor system, everything like that, 130, 135. And then you've still got to put paving. Yeah. When you still say it's in pool it. system, what's that? Is that a cleaning so system? It's a, yeah, it's the best invention. Oh, in I history. know. Okay. Well, I just, I just had me dolphin fixed, man. It cleans yeah. ruins oh, you life. No yeah, more dolphins. Yeah. yeah. So, <laughs> so what you got to do? You got to go out, pull, pull your dolphin out and stuff like that. Oh, it's a pain in the ass. Yeah. So it I lives I, in there 360 days. I was going to say, and that's what I hate about it, like, because <laughs> everyone when they buy the dolphin, and when you have people come around, you go. Oh, I'll pull the dolphin. I take out. exactly. Yeah, yeah, right. I'll pull it out, and then you go. Oh, Where do you put beer, it? Beer's better. So the dolphin sits in. You go. Oh, the kids will swim around. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> so, and that's what happens. So whereas in floor cleaning, then this is about pools. Pools work on turnover. Okay, so turnover oxygenate in the water. So it's basically like a pop-up sprinklers that comes in floor, and it basically pushes all the dirt down to your main drain. Yeah. Sucks it up into your skimmer box. You just empty your skimmer. So when it's a storm, I, yeah, yeah, well, I, that is yeah, insane. So, when, so yeah. when I in my pool, like if it's a storm. I go out there, I go, yep, turn the in-floor on. I go and watch TV, come out two hours later, clean. it's crystal clear. Oh, my God. Yeah, so it's not, it, again, it's not cheap, but if you look at, say, the dolphin, it's... You know, I, I can tell you now, I, and we just had it fixed, and normally I feel it's a bit like the uh, the dentist to send mm. it off to be fixed. Yeah. So easy. He's going to tell me it's fucked up, I'm going to have to buy another one, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. I feel like every two or three years, because exactly what you said, putting them in the pool, and you, you tend to leave them in the pool. Unless you're you have, not supposed to. Unless you yeah. have visitors. But what happened, you kind of have to, right? No, you're well, not supposed I to. I live out in Eltham, so the leaves. Yeah. So you run it. If you pull it out, legit. You watch a leaf come down, you go, yeah. oh, this is ruining me life. I'm going to have to yeah. put it back in. That's, that's so what it. happens, yeah, so what it's happens get is, a pool cover. Well, you just, yeah. no, 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 because I have refused yeah. to do pool covers no, even through up. winter. I ref I, I'm against pool covers because yeah. I'm like, I want to look at me water, man. I want to, I want to, I'm like, I haven't got the fuck, you know what I mean? Like, I want to, the experience nah, you, you, of, of looking at you, it. Mate, for well, sustainability, pool covers are good. No, nah, it's bullshit. Nah, <laughs> nah, I, I disagree. Okay, sustainability, uh, yeah, yeah. no problems, all right? But I'm talking about aesthetics. Yeah, 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 so, yeah. So I always say this to the clients, you know, like, I, I don't want the pool right up the back. So if we're looking where the windows are down there, mm. yes, you know, the right. old design would be, let's put the pool across there. And you, you wouldn't see it. So yeah, we try yeah. and bring the pool closer. Now, uh, one thing that you want to do is that you've made an investment okay with the pool and stuff like that you want to see it at night time you want to go wait where's my 130 yeah, yeah, you want to yeah, see yeah, this yeah. pool glowing so start paying for if itself. you start putting pool covers on i'll be like yeah. well that's yeah. that looks like an eighty thousand dollar pool yeah, now so, yeah, <laughs> so yeah, yeah, yeah. i feel that you want to see what you've put in there just every, the glow every of the, day every, yeah, every day, day and go damn you want to go and play i'd pay for that yeah, that's yeah. it. That's it. I'll, I'll get in that one day, but it looks good. Yeah, I'll get exactly. <laughs> yeah, someone will get in. I've got to go back to work for Someone. pay for it, but in two years I'll get into you. Someone will use it. <laughs> but I, I was, I was going to say, so those those uh, those dolphins, yeah, two three summers max, man. If yeah. you're leaving them in the pool, they yeah. fade, they break, and they, and they go, and they're two and a half three grand. That's, that's so if you're, if you're, that's why you're supposed to take them out. Yeah, I know. You're supposed to leave them in the water. Matter, you live out in God's country, <laughs> out, in, out in Eltham. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, look, I'll tell you right now, it's uh, the dolphins, I always say, and it's probably one of the biggest sellers at the moment. You know, like everyone uses the dolphins. The dolphins, you know? yeah. But, you know, you brought up a great thing before, it's about, you know, about $3,000. So you've got to offset. So just the average pool for inflow is probably about 13000 Okay, yeah. but the good dolphins and uh, the good robotic cleaners, uh, they're in about five dollars $6,000 these days if yeah. you want something really good. So they're not even comparable, So, right? mm. yeah, you're still... Yeah, you know, probably seven, eight thousand dollars away from it. But the difference is, is when you have got in floor cleaning, it is the best thing ever. Yeah, yeah as long and as it'll it, last forever. Last forever. <coughs> so I'm saying that now, so hopefully, my, <laughs> yeah. hopefully my pool or every other pool that we're building out yeah, there still going alright. So, but so, it is just one of the things that is in the pool industry these days, and I think it's a must. Yeah, hundred percent. 
Hey, Dave, can we quickly just revert back a little bit? Just because you have, you know, you said you had about 38 people. Yeah. You know, so you're building a big team. Yep. Uh, and on here, we do like to touch on, there's a lot of different people out there, our audience, their tradies. Yep. They're plumbers, they're building their teams, that sort of thing. You said you started with seven, your sweet spot was 11. Yep. You know, who was the seven that you started with? When you said you got your sweet spot of 11, who was part of that? Are we talking another business partner? Is it no. family? Is it just guns? Were you on the tools? Yeah, yeah definitely I was on the tools there. So um, don't, I mean, the boys will say they'll laugh because yeah. 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 I'm laughing. Like, I can hear them laughing. Yeah. I don't know what I'm <laughs> they always say if the camera's there, I pick up a shovel. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as the camera goes, throw it down. But um, look, no, you, you're weird. So I started uh, my company, you know, I, was, I had a business partner with Exquisite Guns. I was there for 15 years and, you know, people get older and stuff like that. We went our separate ways. I started Franklin uh, by myself. You know, my first job actually was when I left that company. I was pretty lucky. My first job was actually $1 million. You yeah. know, so I had a $1 million so landscape. So I was sort of like, right, you know, my wife was like, oh, how's work going to go and all that? I come home and go, I just got a million dollar job the first time. Just another milli. I just got, shit. <laughs> well, that was years ago. That was the only million dollar job I did <laughs> <laughs> for, for about 10 years. You know? So, but I remember I, like, I had a really good team and I think that, you know, everyone touches on this a lot. Culture is everything mm. in your company. You've got to build it and you've got to sort of say, right, yeah, this is the jobs that we're after. This is, you know, it's, you've got to sort of offer them something like a pathway of saying, right, yeah, this is how good the jobs are. You yeah. can learn so much about it. And you build the team like that. And I had uh, one a guy, James uh, Minahan, he was actually a gun. He worked on the block mm. with us. And, yeah. You know, he went for an interview with us, with Exquisite, anyway. And at that stage, the government was giving you like a $2,000 rebate if for anyone that was 18 years old or whatever. And the, the boss there goes, nah, we're taking the two grand. And he was 19. I was like, mate, but this guy's a gun. So I actually kept his resume. And then eight months later, I started my own business. And I rang him up and he was still working in a surf shop. And I said, mate, you want to come do it? And he goes, oh, yeah, let's beautiful. rip shit up. So, yeah. so we started with that and then we had some really good guns and we sort of spent a lot of time. Okay, So you've you got to put a, that investment into the, into the guys that work for you. I think the biggest hard, the hardest thing that we found is that you do get bigger, okay, and then when you're doing, you're on the tools, you're doing the books, you're doing the quotes, you're doing the design, you've got to delegate, and that's where you start losing money because you're wearing so many different hats. You're not sleeping at night. You're yeah. doing this. Yeah. You know, you, you've spent all day. Last thing you want to do is get in front of the computer, do quotes, then go see people at 9 o'clock at night. So one thing that we learned, with, as the bigger that we got, you know, the less time I had, and I was chasing my tail, and we just weren't efficient at all. Yeah. And that's when we started losing money because we were like, I'm trying too much. So yeah. until I realised that and said, right, okay, let's get a designer in to help do the design, start bringing in some foremen that know the jobs yeah. and start giving yourself a bit more free time to look over the business. You know, and, and does that, that affect the quality though? Because like, you're almost, it, or it, no one ever cares more as much as yeah, you do sort but of you, thing. Like, honestly, we, you do have some great guys out there. We've got some great guys as well that do care about it. And that's, yeah. I mean... you. It's always hard to let go. There's no doubt about it. Like on the way here, I've ring every guy. And I don't have to because I've got great foremen, I've got great staff, great admin yeah. and everything like that. And that was probably the key for us to, to change everything, you know. And, you know, just, you know, I think the best thing for us is that, you know, I mean, look, we all love going to Bunnings. Now, the boys will go to Bunnings <laughs> you know, five times a day. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll go down there for a, like a little yeah. you know, 50 cent Extra you know, poly, poly fit in. Oh, shit, I forgot the ratchet clip. Okay, yeah, I better yeah, go yeah. back again. You know? And I'll have another sausage as yeah, well. Yeah, and you see, can, you see cans of Coke and salad rolls yeah, on there. Yeah, yeah. like, right, yeah. So what happened, we were getting the guys and they were leaving the job sites mm. all the time. So the time that they were spending yeah. going to Bunnings, going to Reese, doing all this, I started getting bills of $28,000. And then... For, just from Bunnings, you know, for, for four weeks. Yeah. So what we did, we hired an administrator uh, girl, and what we did is that we changed, we said, right here, guys, you are not to leave the job site anymore. You got this, this girl here. So what we did, we shut all our accounts, and what we do, if we want to buy concrete, she'll ring three concrete companies mm -hmm. and we're near the job, get the best price, right here, and I always pay it. So the boys are shitty now because they don't leave the job site. Yeah. So that saved that $28,000 a month from Bunnings come down to three and a half grand. <laughs> Yeah, because that so, can be that can be critical. We've all been there, like yeah. perused the aisles with someone else's Bunnings car. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh, mate, it's you, you, you're a little bit freer. Yeah. Oh, do I get this chisel? Yeah. Oh, that chisel, that's the handle on that yeah. chisel is pretty yeah. nice. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. I mean, like, look at that hammer drill. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Dave, how, 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 like you've got 37 people. You said you've yeah. got some good ones. And, and landscaping, I keep saying it, man. Yeah. I lived it, man. It's a, such a tough job, man. Yeah. Dealing with the elements in Australia and, yeah. and doing holes and, and all that. It's super rewarding as yeah. well. 
how are you retaining these guys? How are you retaining the best ones? Yeah. Is there a secret, you know, and is, is it money or is there more to it than oh, that? Money definitely talks. <laughs> yeah. but, uh, no, I, again, at the same time, I think you've got to take yourself out of the business and sort of, you know, it's not about you. you, you I look at the business as like Franklin's a different entity. I work for the business, okay? So you've got to take it about, so it's not about me. It's about right out, boys. What can we create? You don't want to have all these guys work for you and then you're running out of work or this and stuff like that. And when I say 37, I've only had 37 for the last probably you know, six months, okay? But before that, I was sort of sitting around the 26. But the work that we've got is just big. So we're ha happy to put them on. Will I go back a bit? Probably next year. We will see what happens. I've got a few subbies at the moment. I was going to so. say, sorry, fellas. <laughs> 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 Don't book your Easter <laughs> holidays. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. But, um, but I mean, the way that we're looking at it now, like the jobs are just, you know, COVID has just made this industry ridiculous. How did, how did you go through COVID? How did that... Well, oh, you were allowed to keep working. Yeah, yeah, so, yeah, yeah, yeah well, well, in, well, class under entertainment, even bad entertainment was allowed to work. So <laughs> yeah, it was, wasn't it? <laughs> so look, we got a bit of a loophole there. So I hope, yeah, no stay. Parliamentary no. Yeah. No, no, but anyway, They're busy. No, that's yesterday anyway. But no, we actually did. So it's like a ghost town out there. But when COVID hit, we actually started a job. And the best thing ever that we did, we wrecked this guy's driveway. And two days later, COVID hit. And I go, can we still work here? And he goes, well, you fuck me driveway. I can't get my car in. I don't give a shit. Work the whole fucking Central. time. So we did. So back then we had, I think we put off a few guys. And uh, we, we stuck, I think we were about sort of 12 people. But we pretty much were just ran the two jobs and... That was that was it. Coming out of the out of COVID, like especially the last two years, I'd have to say I've never seen the industry ever mm. like this before. And when mm. I say ever, how much work has come in? Yeah, you know, like just for landscapers. So we've got young guys, right? And this is funny, we're working at the block this year. We get young guys that just qualified, demanding eighty five dollars, ninety dollars an hour. And I'm like, mate, you just you haven't even got all your tools. <laughs> nah, that's what that's what's going right is. I'm like, mate, you guys are in fantasy land. Yeah. You know what? I paid him 85 bucks an hour because yeah, I needed yeah, him. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's I was a like, joke, mate, so it? supply demand. Well, it was, and I was like, mate, I'm vomiting as I'm paying him. Mm. You know, so I'm going, Jesus. You know, so I hope it comes back down, which it will. There's no doubt about it. But um, yeah, we're we're seeing numbers. Yeah. Is that because of the few of the businesses, like a lot of the smaller landscaping ones, maybe? Yeah didn't survive yeah. and there was a smaller pool no, so, so, work, so much work pool. so much work and, no every, and well everyone yeah. everyone no pissed labor. off to Byron yeah. so, so <laughs> everyone left, left Melbourne everyone but I mean I'd say every, everyone's living at home and they wanted to because yeah. we, we got stuck at home they want their yeah. homes done up that's why there's so much work yeah so yeah. I, think, I think alone I heard this number I'm not sure if it, you have to correct me if I'm right but I think the pool industry alone went up like 30 or 35 percent in one year of sales that makes sense like okay. exactly what Dan's saying yeah well, it's, people it, didn't go overseas didn't spend the holidays well yeah to there was 180 billion dollars worth of travel that never went left yeah. overseas it stayed here yeah and that's where all the well, renovations pools and that's where that's why 100%, I mean, people and, spend and money's cheap as well at the same time you know like people were getting loans at two percent three percent stuff like yeah. that so money was quite cheap but um, I know it's all going up now but yeah. You know, still today, I would look at our board and I would have at least probably 50 to 60 jobs on our whiteboard mm -hmm. in design. We do probably 12 of those a year. That's it. You know, so that's how much work's coming in. But when so we say, you can pick and choose, essentially. We pick and choose, yeah, we do. <coughs> so uh, yeah. yeah, so we basically, so our, our office is based out in Brighton. We love it out there because it's all sand, no mud. Mm. Sorry, I'm not coming to Eltham. But you know, so <laughs> <laughs> it's all shale out there. Yeah, so yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> but I mean... <laughs> It's sort of, we're in a really, really good position to where we're sitting. Um, you know, you pick your clients as well at the same time. You sort of got to look around because mm. you've got to have a relationship with these guys because yeah, you've got to yeah. be there. As we said, they're looking out the back window. You've got to come past. So you've got to build that trust, that relationship as well yeah. with, with the clients. So yeah. we sort of look at, go right out, this one might be a little bit hard. You know, I'll give it to me best mate. I'll go, mate, he's, he's great. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's got, it's got a good one for you. Yeah, oh, mate, this one's great. Yeah. <laughs> so, but I mean... And that's sort of, yeah, as a landscape, but that's probably one of the best things that you can ever have is looking at a whiteboard and go, right, okay, that actually, that's a really nice design. Let, let's do that, you know. So, that's, that's such a, yeah, that's so a holy grail, right? That's a good position yeah. to be in. Yeah, sure. well, it, it just keeps, as I said, like, I've never seen it like this. So I think Dan would be the same. Mm. Um, just in the building industry as well, um, you know, we've had material shortages and stuff like that. But I, I, we're coming into Christmas now, and I'd have to say every nursery I know sold out of their trees last year, and I've never seen it before. Every, every turf supplier yeah. sold out you know, in the first week of um, December last year. So we're seeing stuff that it's like every nursery guy has made a fortune. There's, like, there's no plants left. Mm. Yeah. There's no turf left. 
So you've got to get, get jump on these things. So we try and plan everything before we come into Christmas. So we've been madly buying all our materials for the yeah. next eight weeks, yeah. making sure even just putting a hold on it, just knowing what's coming up because, you know, the material shortages does affect your jobs, what you're doing. Yeah, so, of course. But yeah, getting to pick and choose the jobs, it's great. Oh, love it, love it. Dave, you've gone on a crazy journey. You know, you started out early on just following your passion, following the smell. What advice would you give to up and comers, you know, your young business owners? Uh, you know, what should, what should they be focusing on? You know, what lessons have you got that you'd pass on? Yeah, definitely. I mean, look, as I said, enjoy it. You know, like I, I always say this, I think if you start your business, you know, the, the, the exciting stuff is don't go too quick. You know, like I look at stuff like you get a business card, be happy with that for a week or two. You yeah, keep looking yeah. at it and go, celebrate that and go, geez, that. that's a great mm. card. Getting your first phone number for that. Celebrate those things. You know, yeah. do, see, you know treat everything like a milestone and yep. embrace it instead yep. of trying to get there too quick. Yeah, you know, have a look around and I'd say take it easy. Don't go from, you know, zero to hero straight away. Yep. You know, just enjoy the travel and have fun with doing it because you know what, we go to work to, to obviously to make money, but you can have fun doing it. Yeah. And you know, you know, that's what you want and to go. And still and still get there. And still get there. Yeah. You know, I mean money is definitely everything. If you don't have money and don't have cash flow, you don't have business. So I mean, I would suggest that, you know, if there's a chance that you can maybe sort yourself out with a good bookkeeper yeah definitely have a great accountant yeah as well and they can you know there's different mm. ways of how you set your businesses up you know how you can lease your cars and all yeah. that sort of stuff so yeah. i think business and company setups is a massive thing yeah and get some advice yeah. do that and then if you are looking for work the best thing that you could do is look at the best designers around australia or in that area and just give them a call because i'll yeah. guarantee you they'll have work yeah, you just know, show so up, make the phone call, knock show on the up, door. Yeah, just keep telling Rock up at the block. <laughs> That's what I say, rock yeah. up. So, yeah, well, we're getting old, so maybe yeah. come. So. <laughs> no, no. <laughs> and Dave, Dave you've, you've had, you've both you started a business with a business partner and you started a business on your own. Yep. Would you say if you were starting out today, yep. knowing what you know, the experiences you've had, what how the industry is sort of moving at the moment, would you consider would you go into business with someone or would you find because you said you need to start with three if it was landscaping yeah. would you go and find two employ employees or would you look to partner with someone look at my age i think i would stick to myself okay but um you know sometimes it's really good to bounce stuff off you know i mean one thing about partnerships they all end mm. whether you die or you split up okay yeah. so that's fact so it's just a matter of when that ends um yeah, you know, I'm one of those people that sort of like to do my own thing and I've learnt that, you know, to build a crew around it. But um, again, I had so much fun with my business partner. As I said, him and I made every mistake, even invented mistakes. <laughs> you know, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. But we laughed about it and it was good yeah, doing yeah. that. So it would probably be a lot lonelier making all mistakes mm. by yourself, you know. So yeah, And that yeah. probably and that gave you the confidence, I suppose, to go, okay, I can do this on my own oh, second time around. 100% I'd look at him and we'd, we'd go, oh, well, we might as well go surfing. Well, fuck that up. <laughs> so, <laughs> so, um, but no, I think, you know, again, you know, for anyone that's out there, it's a great job to do. You know, it's you, you are creating something and it's, it is self-satisfying as well. Yep. You're in one of the best cities in the world here, you know, that's got a lot to offer, you know, and I'll say enjoy the journey. Yeah. Love right. that. Have a bit of fun along the way, Enjoy boys. Enjoy the journey. Yeah. The journey is the destination. That's it. Well, back to the block for us. Right? Yeah. <laughs> 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 no, Dave, really appreciate your time, Thanks, mate. Dave. Mate, plenty no, plenty of great. lessons in that for our audience. It's yeah, awesome. no. Well, look, as I said, this is my second podcast ever, so it's actually quite nerve-wracking to be mate, honest. I, I know you look guys... like a the, seasoned <laughs> professional. Yeah. Hey, I know this is the number one rating uh, <laughs> podcast <laughs> in the world. Correct. You know, you're you're just Australia. We're just Australia. We're coming from the world next year. Victoria or Australia? You came from the number one pod the last time north yeah, east no. <laughs> <laughs> mate, <laughs> mate you thought oh, easy 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 hi dave on my other pod <laughs> <laughs> no mate. thanks guys I, I really appreciate uh, you guys having me on because i know you have had some really big guests and stuff like that so it's an honor so mate, thanks, we thanks, appreciate dave. you coming on man that was awesome no good on you dave you thought the block blew you up mate you haven't yeah. seen nothing <laughs> <laughs> you haven't seen nothing oh the numbers <laughs> <laughs> Like, share, subscribe. Whoever's going to get value, please share. See you at the top. Come on. You. <laughs>